thanks and glory. Give him all thanks and glory. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name this morning. Holy Ghost, we are here this morning. We are here today. We are here today. We are here today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped. Father, we ask that you speak to us this day, because this is the day that you have made. We will be glad and we shall rejoice in you. You are the Elohim, you are the Adonai. You are the great I am that I have. He said, unto you shall the gathering of your people be. I ask that the spirit of truth, the spirit of joy, the oil of gladness, fill your people today. Touch them in a new way. Speak to their heart. Let your counsel be revealed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Can we be seated in this wonderful presence? I'd like to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. As I lift up my hands today unto the Lord, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Hallelujah. Amen. And just listen to the instruction. Listen to me. Listen to me. Everyone must have a face mask on in the church. Get the face mask. Praise the Lord. I have to do this because this is important. And this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. Now, as I stood up there as we were singing that in, this word came to me life. Are you hearing me? I want to welcome all those who are with us online on our YouTube Powerhouse Church Lagos. On Facebook, Living Power Ministry Nigeria, and on the internet, Powerhouse Church Double Slash M I X L H. But I want you to hear me very well, because this is the word of the Lord. This is a, a very, very important prophetic word. Are you listening to me? It says, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass that if thou, it's not talking of people, if you, you that you are hearing me, the God of heaven is speaking very loud, very loud and clear. Very loud and clear. If thou shalt act diligently on to the voice of the Lord. Is it the voice of men? No. The voice of the Lord. Am I with you? Are you with me? The, if you do act diligently. Now write this one down. 
there is consequence of disobedience. Consequence. May you never be victim of consequence of disobedience. I, I realize that when there is an instruction, there is a reason for every instruction. And when there is an instruction, it's for everyone's good. Diligently, diligent, not hearing it today and then tomorrow you, you don't listen to it. Don't be a victim of the consequence of your disobedience. Now, there's no way that God will force any man to do against his will. Where you see people refusing to do what is right, they suffer the consequence. Are you with me? They suffer the consequence when they refuse to do what is right. And the truth is this, is that where the righteous suffer, uh, where the sinner suffer, the righteous will also suffer for it. Are you with me? Now, let me tell you, if in a family somebody decided not to do what is right, disobedient to instruction, it's going to affect everyone. Whether emotionally or not, especially in a family where loves are bound. So there is consequence for every disobedience of man. And that is why people think they can just do anything. You can't do anything. There's a reason for everything. And don't use spirituality to cover what is right. You still have many destiny to fulfill. Don't die before your time. Are you with me? I am speaking according to what the Lord spoke to me. Diligently, acting. Life is meaningless. Please write this one down. Life is meaningless without following instructions. There are what we call instructions are rules. There are rules to everything in life. Amen. Now, I have not started what I'm going to share with you. This is just a teaser. Okay? But I want you to hear me very careful. For everything in life, you must know the rules to it. Now, this young man is playing the keyboard. There are rules to it. If he doesn't follow the rules to it, what he will be playing is, is, is noise. Am I speaking? But as he's using his hand to do these things, you can hear what we call melody. Is that not all? That's what we call me. There are rules to everything in life. You just don't wake up and just do anything you like. There are rules to it. You know, I, I found that one of the uh, early, I found this early in life that if I follow the rules to every details and every issues in my life, then I will be secured. In fact, the heavens will be able to approve whatsoever I do. Are you with me? There are rules to hygiene. There are rules to the way you must live your life. Don't just live by assumption. Don't just be arrogant about things. I was sharing with a young man. I said, everything in life goes through process. There's no quick fix. 
No quick fix. Uh, are you with me? No what? Quick fix. Even microwaves will take a place, a time. You know, when they said microwaves, microwaves, when the technology came, I used to think that, okay, it means that things must, things are get faster. But have you ever noticed that when you freeze your food, listen to me, you freeze your food and then you put it in the microwaves. I've observed that it doesn't take less than 15 minutes before you can get it done. And so there is rules to it. There is a process to it. You have to wait. Is it not supposed to be a quick fix? Is that not the reason why for the technology? But you still have to wait. I almost had, you know, I think it was rice. I almost had a freeze rice. I didn't know that some parts were done, no, some parts would not be done. I was so much hungry, I came home and I said, look, let's get this thing done. And I gave, and I said, I think I put about three minutes to, and I observed that I have to wait for 10 good more, or 10 good minutes more to get it to a certain level. There is nothing like quick fix. It has to go through process. Don't waste your destiny. Be diligent to listen to instruction and follow it. And most of the time, some instruction don't is not convenient. Are you with me? It's not easy. You know, human beings have this attitude of wanting things to happen so quick. But it doesn't happen like that. Praise the Lord. Now, that is just a teaser for you. Come and give Jesus a big hand. Come and put it together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This morning, you know, we talk about Holy Ghost baptism. And then um, I share with you how you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Do, do you remember that I shared? Did I share with you how you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Now, let me quickly go through that before we go into the impact, the impact of the Holy Spirit in our life. Number one, you must be born again. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit without not being born again. Paul says in Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, he says, have you believed? Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 1, and two. Let me quickly. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinthian, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So they were disciples, they were not what? They were not unbelievers. Then verse 2 says, And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as had whether there be any Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Have you received the Holy Ghost since when you believe? So you must be born again. It's not meant for unbelievers, it's meant for believers in Christ Jesus. Number two, you have to ask God for it. You have to ask God. Okay? And Luke chapter 11 verse 13 says says here Jesus was saying so, we will see that is in red that Luke chapter 11 verse 13 he says and if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. So you can ask for it and he will he's asked for him not him, okay? Because he's a person. Ask for him. Ask for the Holy Spirit today. Don't go out of this place because the enemy will continue to trample upon you and oppress you. Without the Holy Ghost in your life, you are empty. 
You are empty. You are powerless. So ask for it. He said, if you, Father, that are evil. You know, some fathers, some fathers, their children will be hungry, they will be eating. They will even ask the child to come. And the child will be seeing them eating. Are you with me? Who's supposed to be to eat first before the is it not the child that's supposed to be eat? And, and the Lord said, and God of heaven says, look, I'm a good father. So if you ask Holy Spirit from me, Luke chapter 11 verse 13, I am going to give it to you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall do what? You shall find. Number three, you must believe that it comes through faith. By faith, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Now, number four, by laying of hands. Let me read this to you. Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 6. By laying of hands, you can receive the Holy Spirit by laying of hands. Say, and when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and do what? And prophesied. So there was an addition. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was an addition. They didn't just pray in the Holy Ghost. They were speaking in tongues and then prophesied. So prophecy is not only meant for those who are in prophetic ministry. Prophecy is by the Holy Ghost. So all laying of hands. And finally, by open your mouth to receive the utterance and speaking in tongues. How many people want to receive the Holy Spirit today? Are you ready to receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Lift up your two hands and receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, I ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you now. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Let there be a release of utterance. Now let's everyone rise up and let begin to speak in tongues for just a few minutes. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Rabba Kiska. Lendra de Voko. Rama Gusukoto. Yaman Leko Tokopak Yabab. If you are live with us, just begin to speak in tongues. Wherever you are, wherever you are, on the internet radio, on the on, on, on the YouTube, wherever you are, receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes, we receive right now, but listen. Brente okopo kone ke liko toko pakala, liko to suko toko pakile koto hoya, le gre du suko toko mangre deko, e kruzoko pakile koto kosoko, e gile koto kopakia, liko soko to mala, a brondo sutori ayaraba. Yes, receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Rengele ke toko pakile koto koma. Lingra, do so kopekeleke, le gromo so kopekele begodo homo so koremo. Come on, pray in the spirit. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Olomo sa, branda so, obrundeke, greto kopa kuseke tekele, le greto suko to kopa kilia, linka to so kote, le gromo so kopekele amana barwa, lingro do bo so kote ke begodo, lingro do bo so kopeke do so kote kote imana barwa, lingro do so. Ento akrado sokopaka melado do 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 sotoya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Be seated. Today, I want to quickly share with you on impart of the Holy Spirit. The impart of the Holy Spirit. This is the month of Holy Ghost invasion. And you have to 
go with me. I hope you have your pen, you have your note, and you have your Bible with you. Now, we have to do this quick. Number one, one of the impact of the Holy Spirit is that he convicts us of our sin. Remember in Luke chapter 3, verse 22, 21, 22, especially 22, the Bible says, And now, and the Holy Ghost descended the body like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. And in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, verse 8, I want to read verse 7 and 8, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. The Bible says there are three that bear records in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, verse 8, now says, There are three also that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the waters, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Until there's no more what we call the art, there will always be the spirit. There will always be the water, and there will be always be the blood. That's why you, no man has any right to take the blood of another man, to spill the blood of another man. If that happened, your generation of that man will continue to suffer it until that cause is lifted. The world cannot survive without water. In fact, they said 70 something percent of the world, the world is surrounded by water. Am I speaking? Because it cannot, it cannot survive. The world cannot survive without water. And finally, you are not just a man in the flesh, you are a man in the spirit. So we are in a spirit world. That is why your colorful destiny is determined by the empowerment that you receive in your spirit. You cannot be a carnal mind and survive the tide of time. You cannot be successful in life if you are not spiritual. Amen. That's why some people seek the kingdom of darkness. They when they go through the spirit, the, the kingdom of darkness and get involved in all matter of occultism and idolatry. Are you with me? So to contend and to be able to come, to be successful as a Christian, you must be spiritually matured. You must be spiritually versatile. And the only way to it is when you understand the impact of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's why the Bible says, don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Don't grieve him. Are you with me? Don't grieve him. Because if you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will just leave you alone to your own foolishness. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Grieve not the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. It says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That is what sealed you. That is what covers you. So the first thing you must not do, because the Holy Spirit will always convict you of your sin, according to John chapter 16, verse 8, is to flee from sin. Flee from every appearance of sin. He says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When he, now, 
Go to verse 7. Just a step backward. A step backward. Verse 7. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. That's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, verse 8 now said, when he is come. Are you with me? He will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness of judgment. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. 16 verse 9. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Verse 10. And of righteousness, because I go to my father, and you see me no more. Praise the Lord. The comforter which is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why most, most of the time you know that something is telling you that what you are doing is wrong. You are a Christian and you are lying. The Holy Spirit will let you know. He will not leave you. He will not leave you. Number two, he will testify of Jesus Christ. John chapter 15, verse 26. Now, let's look at John chapter 15, verse 26. It's in part to testify. He said, but when the comforter come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, who is the comforter? The spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. That's why, you see, no matter what people think about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit always testified that Jesus is alive to us. Are you listening to me? That is a, a great impact of the presence of Jesus, the Son of the living God, in your life. You know the reason why I ask us to read 1 John chapter 5, verse 7? is for us to know that the Trinity are one. The Bible says there are three that bear records in heaven. The Father, the Son, uh, the Father, the, the Son, and what? And the Holy Spirit. And the three are what? Are one. Are one. You can't take them away from it. You can't take them away. They are together. So, he will do what? He will testify about whom? About Jesus. Number three, he will guide you into the truth. Let's go back to John chapter 16. I want to read from verse 12. John chapter 16 says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Verse 13, how bad when he, the spirit of truth, or the comforter, is come, it will guide you into all truth. You know why he will guide you into all truth? And that's the reason why you need him. You know, I always ask the Holy Spirit many times. I've asked him, when people are talking to me, you know, because this world is full of falsehood. People will be lying to you, and that lie can even turn to be, you will think is the truth. Is that not so? So I come to conclusion that what I need is the spirit of truth. So when people are talking to me, I keep quiet to listen to my spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of me. Lord, what is he saying? Is he right? And lo and behold, he has never failed. The spirit of truth, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, Shall he speak and he will show you things to come? We come to that. Verse 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. That is when, that's the number, number four. He reveals unto us the things to come. Bible says, verse 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine 
and shall show you unto you. He revealed things to come. Number five, he represents all that Jesus is to us. John chapter 14, verse 16. We will not read that one. But I'd like us to read this one. Because you need to understand that the reason why many of us are still, if, are still failure is because we don't allow the Holy Spirit to the Holy Spirit impact in our lives. We don't. We think too much of ourselves. We are full of ourselves. Today, the church is in disarray because the, the impact of the Holy Spirit is not felt. Are you with me? And that is, the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. Are you with me? He will teach you all things. Some things you don't know, he will teach you. I've, I've, I've seen people ask me whether I'm a doctor. <laughs> that was my ambition. Actually, I wanted to be a doctor. I don't know whether you know that. I pursued that for almost seven years. I couldn't get it through. I loved to be a doctor. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And to bribe God when God was, the Lord was speaking to me directly that no, you cannot. I was bribing God, trying, thinking I was wiser than God. I said, when I get to the hospital as a doctor, that all my patients will be healed. We did not sack me. Because when people are healed, we did pay for their, <laughs> we did pay their hospital bill. I was deceiving myself, thinking I wanted to bribe God as a young man then. You know, I was telling, there was a day I was so frustrated, I tried, tried everything. Then I got, I, took, I was praying one day, I was crying to God. I said, God, I wanted to do this. That was my ambition. And the Lord said, no, that's not your path. That's not your route in life. But I wanted to do what I think is... And the Lord said, okay. And I took God, I said, if you, if you allow this to happen, that one day I will just get to the, when I become a doctor, I'll just say, in Jesus' name, rise up on your feet. As if I'm the healer. Praise the Lord. A patient comes to you and you think that that's the next thing he's looking for. He wants you to diagnose what is, what is wrong with, with him or her. Are you with me? So, he teaches you all things. John chapter 14, verse 26. Can we read it? He said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Everybody say all things. Come on, say it louder. All things. Come on, say all things. Come on, say it louder. All things. And he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, I may not be able to, because I think I have to start rounding up now. But let's see this one. That's number six, have we? Number seven. Help us to pray. You cannot quantify the energy that the Holy Spirit gives to you when you pray in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Can you just bring it live to me? He said, likewise the Spirit. Ever say the Spirit. Come and say the Spirit. Leka, Zurama, Kataya. The Spirit. Help all our infirmity for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself Make it intercession for us with groanings. Uh, for those of you who have not received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I, 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 I cannot convince the way you are living your life. Because you need it. It's an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Praying for you every day. And he that such the heart, knowing what the spirit, mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saint according 
to the will of God. We stop there today. Are you ready? Are you ready? You are going to pray seriously this morning. You are going to cry to the Lord. Rise up on your feet. I want you to cry. Holy Ghost, I need your impact in my life. It teaches us. It convicts us when we want to go wrong. It represents Jesus. It reveals the things to come unto us. What else do we want? When you wake up in the morning and the Holy Spirit tells you what will happen in your office, it helps you to solve problems that could come your way. Are you with me? I've escaped all manners of evil because I diligently listen to the Holy Spirit. I've have reason to do some certain things because <laughs> the Holy Spirit just helped me out. Sometimes when it seems as if I don't have answer to some certain things in life, I start praying the Spirit. I just start praying. And by the time I pray, answers will come. Are you with me? You need that power. Another thing is that when the Holy Spirit empowers you and reveals things to you, you don't need to go around and go around and go around and be seeking what is not. Are you with me? So you are going to cry, Holy Spirit, I need your impact in my life, in my home, in my business, in my academics, in my... I don't want to be a failure in life. I want to succeed. I want to prosper. I want to go forward. Holy Spirit, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Come, Holy Spirit. Come in your power. Come, have your place. Come, have your place. I need you right now. Come and have your place in my life. Rekelosa, Akatoya, Mele Kotokopa. I need your impact. You will not go through stress again. You will not struggle again. Come and have your impact in my life. Come and take your place in my life. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Radu Saka, Andarabatana, Shantarabana Sandana, Kalama Sandaraba Santarabana Sandana, Tantara Us Santarabana, Suriyama Labana. Oh, let your living. Water flow by my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every seed where there is no in my heart. Unto you, I know. Oh, let your living water flow by my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take
Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Take your place, Holy Spirit. Have your impact in our lives. Holy Spirit, have your impact in our lives this morning. Touch us anew. Come, Katosa. Le Grono Soko Pakola Balaba. Le Kondo Soto Rabala Baba Baba Baba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because you will take full control and your name shall be glorified. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name. We have worship. Amen. I believe you have been blessed this morning. I believe you have received the empowerment by the Holy Spirit. Go in the strength and go and conquer your territories. Go and succeed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for joining us live. God bless you. God bless you all. Continue to renew your anointing in the name of Jesus. The Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Let's um, have our seats as we go into the time of giving. It's time to give a uh, tithe and offering unto the Lord this morning. Let's package our offering and tithe. I'll read from the book of Malachi, chapter 3 verse 10 and verse 11. As we give our tithe and offering, Malachi 3, 10 from verse 10. The Bible says that bring ye all tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I pray that somebody will have will not have a room enough to receive God's blessing in Jesus' name. I will not have enough room to receive God's blessing in Jesus' name. And I will rebuke the devourer of your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your wine cast her fruit before the time in the field said the lord of hosts in the mighty name of jesus i want us to understand that when we follow the instruction and the commandment of the lord god almighty concerning our tithe and our offering we should know that the lord god almighty is always faithful to his word to us so this morning i want us to package our offering and tithe as we give unto the lord this morning the bible says that it will destroy it will rebuke the devourer for our sake and also destroy and shall not destroy the fruit of our ground i pray the lord will not destroy our, the fruit of our ground in jesus name and the enemy will not have any way into our finances and our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's stand up as we give our offering, our tithe this morning as we pray. If you are with us online, you can also be part of this time to give unto the Lord. And um, I'm sure that the Lord 
will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to appreciate you this morning for the time like this to give unto you. We thank you because we believe in your word and your word is truth to us. We believe that you are always faithful to your commandment and to all your instruction. Even concerning our offering and our tithe this morning, I pray that the Lord that you will continue to bless us and bless the work of our hands in Jesus' name. Pray that Lord you rebook every devourer and destroy every work of enemy upon our lives and our works in Jesus' name. We will eat the fruit of our labor. We will not be stranded in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, for all that are given even online and those that does not even have to give the Lord God Almighty, we continue to provide for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate the Lord as we drop our offering this and tithe this morning. Amen. Let's have our seat in the presence of the Lord as um, I invite our Father and the Lord to close the service for us. <laughs> 